you know, Samo is not 30 anymore. Of course, he's going to be doubled at certain points. Yeah. You know? And yes, it is frustrating sometimes that there are not as many opportunities for some of the martial arts guys, but it's starting to change again. Um, look at Fancy Wong. For years, Fancy mm. Wong was out in the cold, but now he's coming back. Mm, indeed. Yeah. You know? And then, sorry, that's the, the lady in red is Anki Belki, um, actress and director and mother of Anki. Also, Anki. I don't she, she's Anki the, 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 the mother is Anki Lau and the, and the oh, daughter, yeah, the daughter is, Anki is Anki Belki who's in Connected Vampire who admires me Confessions of Pain etc who's uh, actress and model as well you know mm-hmm. and, and her daughter is seriously good looking The Vampire Who Admires Me is a shit film but uh, she she um, she has a western look about her I don't know if her father yeah, she's, is she's uh... um, half German half German right. she's a Eurasian father's German because she's also done a lot of work in Germany on TV and, and films and appeared in German Playboy, but sadly just in the news section. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, but you, you, I remember a great fact you looked up about the vampire who admires me, Stu, that one of the stuntmen in it to play the vampire has played a vampire on numerous occasions all the way back to the 80s. Basically, your quote, this is Mr. Vampire. Mm-hmm. The fucking vampire king himself. Yeah. You know, so that, that that that's just a delightful fact for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, here we go. This is one of the classic scenes. I, I I guess it's surely based on a misunderstanding. You think he's uh, trashing Fung Hakon's car? I guess. Mm-hmm. I think actually Fung Hakon is actually really good in this film. Like I think he is one of those really underrated actors. Like sure he was great in the kung fu films, but when it comes to like more modern cinema, yeah. He he's also a Herman Yao's boy uh, nowadays. He's seen every Herman Yao movie essentially, the Gong Tao and Oriental Black Magic, and now the latest movie I saw him in was the first Seventh Night, and he's an actor in those. He's a old. He looks good still. He's older, but uh, I I like seeing a veteran. And he's also face. in Ip Man too. He's, wow. He turns up in Ip Man too. So yeah. Cool. Uh, is he in Herman Yao's Ip Man movie? Do you know that? Um, probably because ninety nine percent of the cast and crew from. From it, from it Man 2 seem to pop up in it. In the young, <laughs> it's, yeah. That's great. That the, makes the, the Young Man does feature Andy Taylor from the UK uttering the immortal words, Your Kung Fu is most formidable, at one point to, to somebody. So, yeah, it's it should be fun. It should be a lot of fun. Yeah. I'll probably watch the Herman Yao Ip Man before Ip Man or Ip Man 2, uh, just for the sake of it, you know, because I'm a great fan of Herman Yao and I would love to see him do. Well, yeah. rocks, okay. <laughs> I'm I'm not dissing them. I'm just taking my time. <laughs> Mike, you need to kind of really understand this thing about Ken. I've talked about Young and Dangerous films so much, them he still hasn't gotten to them yet. I, I'm I'm gonna watch them before the commentary. Has to watch them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because you know what will happen then? He'll just say, "Stu, I've seen the future, and Ekin Chen is the future." I was wrong for all these years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I like him. No longer like IFT movies. He'll just be obsessed with Ikin Chang, and he'll be watching <laughs> "I'm Your Birthday Cake" and other movies endlessly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I would watch "I'm Your Birthday Cake" for uh, n- not for n- right now, not for anything, <laughs> but for Michael Wong. Because well, Michael Wong is wonderful <laughs> in that movie. Ah, yeah. I what you mean for the other very good reason. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, even more Michael Wong. I'd watch a movie called I'm Your Birthday Cake for Michael Wong. Absolutely. That's <laughs> on air now, and that will be forever forever cemented in time. He's great in that movie. Uh, uh, yeah, we, I, I don't know how long far, far into the movie are. I think now sometime there might be a plot uh, about antiques or smuggling or some crap like that. <laughs> You know, it's not uh, it's not much that uh, uh, it's not plot n- much plot in this movie. But uh, when, when Peter Young comes on screening, I got to talk about him because I, I quickly become a great fan of Peter Young, and I'll, I'll explain why. Uh, the guy with great uh, uh, great look there uh, earlier in the scene when Lee Hui Sang entered, the, one of uh, the bad guys. Does anyone actually know when Samuel was writing on the back of the car what that stood for? Uh, that I'm afraid not. I haven't had a chance to check. 
I mean, the problem is sometimes there's certain like Chinese characters or things that if they're painted in a certain color have very, very strong meanings. Mm -hmm. You know, like, um, it's when we do the <laughs> dangerous commentary, especially when we discuss some of that, but it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> nah, there oh, we go. Roy Chow himself, the man, the man himself. Worked with everyone from Bruce Lee to Harrison Ford. Yeah. As uh, King Who also, great uh, presence in King Who's movies. Uh, Touch of Zen, Fate of Lee Khan. Well, he was in pre pretty much every classic aside from Dragon Inn. He was in Valiant once as well. But uh, uh, great, one of those like cinema's great speaking voices. Mm. Uh, whenever you get to hear it, his uh, great voice, especially in English. He was very uh, apt at English because he worked as an interpreter in the United States Army. Yeah, before well, he also had a, he loved people's accents. I think he was very much he was someone who loved speaking English, and he'd sit down with you and ask about your accent and where you were from. And yeah, you know, he he had like a real love for the English language. Yeah, you know, very strong Christian as well. Yeah, you know, very very righteous fellow. So yeah. Uh, apparently, he um, he before he passed away in the nineties, uh, he became a Christian uh, during his latter years because he survived apparently both a car crash, a plane crash and several heart attacks. Uh, according to the internet, so no wonder, you know, he, uh, he, uh, he saw something in that, a sign or two in that. Now we're introducing Lung Guy Yen's character and the great Chu Chi Ling from Kung Fu Hustle. Yeah. Who looks the same as well in Kung Fu yeah. Hustle. He doesn't look at it all different. Age. And yeah. he's ripped in Kung Fu Hustle as well. He looks good. And <laughs> <laughs> this guy. David Nick, according to the research I did. Uh, who the hell is? I don't know. No one probably will ever know. But, probably uh, a policeman or something, because the, back then a lot of the time that's where they'd find the Westerners, either a businessman or a policeman or some, you know, a friend of a friend. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was before the days of Chunking Mansions, really, so... Uh, yeah, it wasn't. It was also the day before there was the big influx of Westerners wanting to be in movies. So it was strange. There were a lot of people who came in and out, did the occasional movie and everything. And some of those guys, I'd love to sit down and get you know their stories, but so many of them just disappeared. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you're 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 kind of blessed that you have guys like Roy Horan who 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 became active as uh, you know uh, in the likes of seasonal corporations. So he. He, he he was part of creating movies and therefore he could collect stories and uh, pass them on in his later years as well. Oh, no, Roy's a great guy. One of the nice, another guy paid his dues in the industry, gone from being a wild, crazy man to very mellow, very intelligent, very just superb guy. Uh, teaches at Hong Kong Polytechnic, and of course his daughter now, Selena Jade, from um, the the Wu Jing movie. You know, Making her mark as an actress and singer, so yeah. And uh, and here we go. In in this scene, we have uh, this is Roy Chow, of course, but we have Peter Young uh, uh, looking at the antiques. And uh, since I uh, did the research, I, I've seen a lot of movies, or oh, oh, not a lot of, but three or four movies with Peter Young, and he's became to me one of the great actors in swordplay movies of the late '60s and early '70s. He did a few movies with Joseph Quo, uh, King of Kings. Uh, the Son of Swordsman, uh, and I think Swordsman of All Swordsmen, in particular King of Kings and Swordsman of All Swordsmen, he's a terrific actor. Uh, he's got dramatic range, and he also ex uh, is good in the fight scenes that are way ahead of their time for the late 60s. I don't think anyone uh, outside of Joseph Kuo and King Hu did as well in Taiwan, you know, Wucha cinema, and Peter Yang is really uh, a memorable presence there. Here he's wacky. <laughs> I mean, it's it's, it's funny because it's so many of those movies, unfortunately, in Hong Kong, have, you know, vanished. You know, like there's a lot of movies like that that, that you know, in Hong Kong, nobody knows about. That it, um, that's one of the frustrating things when I first came to Hong Kong, realizing that like with the Shaw Brothers movies and a lot of the early Golden Hour stuff, so many of those films, you know, that we'd all grown up watching and would watch again and again and again, nobody here had seen for so many years. I mean. It's, I think we talked about it briefly last time, like Alexander Fusheng. You know, in Hong Kong, nobody uh, you know, under a certain age really knows who Alexander Fusheng was because those movies you know, sat in the Shaw Brothers' archive for so long. 